CPAP is one of the most common methods for treating sleep apnea, and it's one of the most effective and proven methods. But it isn't your only treatment option. From simple lifestyle changes to something a little more extreme, there are several options out there. So if you're looking to get rid of your CPAP machine, or it's just not working for you, let's take a look at some alternatives. Hi everyone, I'm Taylor. Before we go much further, it's important that we note that continuous positive air pressure, or CPAP, is one of the most common treatment methods for people with sleep apnea. In the past, we've discussed CPAP and other sleep apnea treatments that use positive air pressure, such as BiPAP and APAP. But as effective as these treatments can be, some people find it invasive and uncomfortable. So let's talk about some CPAP alternatives, but as always, check with your doctor before making any changes to your sleep apnea treatment regimen. Like CPAP, some of these alternatives also require a medical prescription. Okay, so our first recommendation is perhaps the easiest and certainly the least invasive. It's making lifestyle changes and adjustments to your daily and nightly routines. There are some real positive changes you can make to your lifestyle to help reduce the symptoms of OSA or just snoring in general. First, you might try switching to sleeping on your side or stomach. Sleeping on your back can affect the shape and positioning of tissue around the throat and also increase the potential of your tongue blocking your airway. Side and stomach sleeping are associated with more comfortable breathing. Second, avoid alcohol and other sedatives before bed. Sedatives can cause your throat muscles to relax, which can worsen OSA symptoms by making your airway even narrower. Some studies have shown weight loss can drastically reduce OSA symptoms. Your doctor can help you manage your weight through dietary practices and exercise. And while more research is needed to cement the relationship between smoking and OSA, some studies suggest smoking can increase your risk of developing OSA. Your doctor may recommend cutting out cigarettes as part of your lifestyle changes. Okay, so if you try the lifestyle changes and they aren't quite working, you can try anti-snoring mouth guards. Heavy snoring is a major symptom of obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, the most commonly diagnosed type of sleep apnea. People with OSA snore heavily because their breathing passages are blocked, and this can prevent air from passing through normally. Anti-snoring mouth guards open up the airway to help you breathe more easily and prevent snoring. Most anti-snoring mouth guards fall into one of two categories. Mandibular advancement devices, or MADS, push the lower jaw forward. These can be custom fitted in a lab or boil and bite devices you can customize at home by softening them with hot water and biting down to make an impression. Tongue retaining devices, or TRDs, use suction to hold the tongue in place and prevent it from falling into the back of your throat, a common source of heavy snoring. Most TRDs are one size fits all and don't require any customization. There are also hybrid mouth guards that incorporate both mechanisms, serving as both MADS and TRDs. MADS tend to be the more comfortable option because they are customized for your mouth. On the other hand, TRDs are usually the most affordable options. The caveat here is that these mouth guards can curb heavy snoring, but they aren't as effective as treating other OSA symptoms. MADS and TRDs are typically recommended for people with mild OSA and those who only experience OSA symptoms when sleeping on their back. In severe sleep apnea cases, some patients may look into surgery. This is especially the case with those who haven't responded well to CPAP, lifestyle changes, and other less invasive treatment options. Some surgeries involve removal or shrinkage of certain areas of your mouth. For example, many children develop OSA due to enlarged tonsils or adenoids. Tonsillectomies and adenoidectomies are often used in these cases. For other procedures, surgeons may reposition the tongue or jaw to permanently expand your airway. Nasal surgeries such as rhinoplasty alter the shape of your nose for the same purpose. Surgeries are typically used as a last resort since they're the most invasive sleep apnea treatment options. However, they can be effective. Finally, we should talk about some of the emerging technologies in this field. For example, take the INAP. This is a device you wear that uses gentle suction to pull the tongue forward while you sleep and promote airflow inside your breathing passages. INAP doesn't require a face mask, so it may be more comfortable than CPAP therapy, though it isn't recommended for people with oral, gum, or soft palate health problems. Another product you might see a lot of ads for is something called Inspire. This device is a surgical implant that monitors your breathing. When you turn it on at night, it will deliver mild stimulation to the nerves that control your tongue and airway muscles. The idea behind these is that as your muscles are stimulated, your airway remains open, thereby reducing the symptoms of OSA. So what does all of this mean? Like we said, CPAP may be considered the gold standard for sleep apnea treatment, 
but there are other options out there. If your positive air pressure therapy isn't working as intended, talk to your doctor about alternative sleep apnea treatments. And by the way, if one of those mouth guards caught your eye, we have a video all about our favorite anti-snoring mouth guards right here. Thanks for watching. Sweet dreams, everyone.